I get questions from in-house students and long-distance students that ask about the Book of the Ninja. The Shoninki, the Bansen Shukai, all these old ninja tomes, ninja manuals. Are they useful today to read? Should I have them in my library? The answer is it depends. I do believe if you are a student of Koryu, old style martial arts, you should know this stuff. If not, just to have a reference in your library. So I'm reading from the Book of the Ninja, the Bansen Shukai by Anthony Cummins. And there's also a version I have, the Bansen Shukai and the Shoninki here, translated by Don Rowley. Both of these are good books. This one has two manuals. This one has one. You can pick these up on Amazon. I read through these once a year, or at least look through them quite often, because I get questions about them. Are they practical? Yes. If you like to study how the ninja would infiltrate a castle, there are 22 different tomes in here that have all kinds of strategy. And I was talking about this this week because we're going to get a really bad weather pattern coming this weekend with a cold spell. So I was talking about the 18 skills of the ninja and they're detailed and listed in these books. And one of these on page, I'm looking at page 294 of this book, talks about weather and understanding the weather patterns and the stars in the sky to help you on raids and things like that. Here's how they used to talk about weather back then, because obviously the culture was completely different. Nowadays, you and I are fortunate enough, we have cell phones, we have Doppler radar, it shows us what's coming, but back then they had no idea. So a lot of these could be very wrong. But here are a couple things regarding astronomy and astrology. So they're talking about the 15 points of forecasting, the winds and the rain. Weather was a huge part of things back then because of farming, and again, military actions depended on the weather. 15 points to forecast the rain. Here are a couple. When the stars are twinkling like blinking eyes, it will be very windy within three days. If at night black clouds hang over the mouth of the Big Dipper, or if black clouds spread over the celestial river and look like fish or an aquatic am animal, it is going to have the wind that will last a long time. If the sun has a halo around it, it will be rainy. If the moon has a halo, then it will be windy. Also, in the direction of the moon, if it is waning, it will most likely be windy and rainy in that area. If the sunset is a red, deep crimson, it will not be rainy, but it will be windy. There are so many of these assumptions in here, but things that they used to notice in the patterns that worked in meteorology. If it is windy early in the day, it will be calmer in the evening. You should expect a large wind the next day. There's so many things. If black clouds pierce sunrise or sunset, then there will be a tempest within three days. If the sun is high and shining strongly, there will be black chi, shaped like the, snake of a dra the shape of a dragon. It will be windy and rainy. If a cloud is shaped like a gun carriage, it is a sign of a large wind that is coming. It's so cool. In autumn, if there are no clouds or no wind, it will not be rainy. If storm petrels fly in large flocks, it is a sign of the wind and rain. If dolphins are playing in the water, it is a sign of a large wind coming. There's so many things like this in this book. Again, back then, this would have been vital knowledge. Even if it wasn't true, it, it might be true half, half the time. Of course, we have the modern technology on the internet. We can just look it up. So for us, we're getting a bad cold spell this weekend. We don't have to consult books like this anymore, but they do help in understanding the context of the samurai and the ninja and how their daily life was and their culture. To prepare for cold weather now, I just tell people, look, you have weather, you can prepare, you can check your pipes, uh, leave the water dripping if you need to. If you have animals outside, take them in, prepare your farms, prepare your crops however you need to, make sure the water doesn't freeze over. Again, take pets inside, they're not meant to be outside, things like that. Uh, make sure your gutters are clean so that ice doesn't form, have your shovel and salt ready, things like that. Have a car kit in your car. All these things that we take advantage of, this stuff would have been written in scroll, written form back then. It wouldn't have been passed around lightly. And only the rich back then probably had access to information like this. So if you're into ninjutsu and history of infiltration, if you're a warfare enthusiast, if you're a military person, you're going to love these books because they teach you about the old ways. And some of the old ways still can apply now. But they talk about things that we don't do anymore, like breaking into castles and 
becoming an arson to start fires to scare the opponents, things that obviously we can't do now in our society. We wouldn't do back then. There's all kinds of weird and nasty things that they did in warfare to win. It wasn't about looking good. It was about winning the war. And a massive part of military strategy for hundreds of years involved the shinobi and how to steal in and get information and tacticians and gather intelligence about the enemy and infiltrate by disguising yourself and bringing back the information so that they could win or at least who they worked for could win. A good gift for yourself for the holidays might be to buy one of these tomes to keep on your shelf, open them up and then appreciate, like I do, the century that we live in. The 21st century, it's all at our fingertips on the internet. And when I look at my cell phone and can look two weeks out or a week out fairly accurately with the forecast, seeing the weather patterns, I'm already way ahead of any of these guys to be able to prepare for cold weather. So again, if you want any of these books, they're available on Amazon or perhaps at your local bookseller. They're really cool to reference and I've been referencing these for 20, 30 years. I just love that they're available now in paperback or hardback form that we can access and just talk about. Because in my daily classes here at the dojo, I get questions from a few people about the history of the ninja and I always reference these books. The internet, has it changed our world for the better or for the worse? We could argue either way, but having these old physical forms of book reference are a wonderful way to spend a rainy afternoon.